Well, thank you, Gimba. Joining us now to give another perspective is Shino Fagwin Ro Byron, who is former governor's advisor to DFID. You're welcome to Sunrise Daily. Good morning. Yeah, Thanks well, me. you have been watching what's been going on in yes. the political space. And uh, only recently, I, well, today, I know that the topic is going to change a little to the budget that the president is going to be presenting. Yes. Uh, but that is also another issue for discussion because yes. this, uh, we understand that the administration is looking at starting a new budget cycle yes. uh, where they start from January and yes. then end in December. Yes. Do you think that they will be able to achieve that with the presentation of the 2018 budget today? Well, you see, the, the, the issue about budget cycles is not precisely what month to what month it is. Mm. It's what you do in between those months. So if it's from March to March and you slow down in between, or if it's from January, uh, June to July and you slow down into, in, the, in between, then you have problems. The budgetary uh, cycle has a lot to do with listing your priorities, following up on them, having a procurement plan, money is available, disbursements on time, keeping fidelity to the budget. Now, if that cycle is not effectively and efficiently processed, then no matter how much time you give it, the hiccups we've had before, the problems we've had before with budgetary cycles has been because either there's an issue with drawing down money, there's an issue with having procurement plans laid out, there's an issue in the procurement process. There could be issues of capacity to actually deliver on the budgets themselves. Mm. And also the possibility of unrealistic budgets. Well, I'm sure there must be a reason yes. why the federal government is thinking that it should be able to start a proper uh, January to December budget. Uh, they say that, you know, I think that is what our laws recognize. But what we find is that usually we present a budget maybe in December yes. of the year before, yes. and then there is this lingering uh, debate which yes. goes on and on for six months, and then we yes. usually have to do, uh, is it... Uh, Operate the old budget for another six months. We rely on sections of the law that let you, you know, operate it for another six months after it ought to have, you know, yes. expired or a new budget ought to have kicked in. Yes. So, but with what you've seen on the ground, yes. I mean, this is the plan. This, this was what they proposed. Yes. Do you think that going by what they have proposed, yes. would they be able to meet that new budget cycle? Well, I think there's a determination on their part. It's almost like a new year resolution on their part to meet the budget cycle. However, what I said initially still subsists in the sense that um, you have to get your processes right and on time. It's a timeless thing. Now, what they've done that is done right is to do some of the, you know, uh, discussions between the executive and the legislature. Hence, you see uh, the, the president of the Senate going to uh, Asso Rock to have dinners, to have discussions. So a number of the wranglings that normally go on between the legislative arm of government and the executive arm I believe that has been cut short, so that's cut short part of the time. So if they can, you know, if they can, um, if they can save some time on that, yes. But if they said they'll do it, if they, I mean, there's a determination to do it, of course it's possible, because budgets are supposed to be year on, year on. But in the process of the budget, things have to be done. People don't wait for executive orders. People should have responsibilities. Mm. along the line for the budget. Agreed. Today is the know. 7th of November, yes. though. I mean, we're almost entering the second week yes. of November. Presenting the budget for the, you know, they're supposed to start, or keep, yeah, come mm. into effect in, mm. on the 1st of January. January yes. Is it really possible that the National Assembly, I mean, do you think that they have enough time to work on the budget that we presented today? Well, they say, you, you, you know, shoot for, the, shoot for the stars. You may end up landing on the moon. You know, they've given themselves a high... Uh, challenge, right? Okay, they may not make exactly the mark, but the fact that they attempt... Now, one thing that will help them, and uh, which a number of us have, have been uh, talking about, is the capacity for government to coordinate within itself. I think that is a shortcoming of this government. Uh, the coordination capacity, uh, you know, needs to be seriously worked on. And you see, when you don't coordinate, you tend to work at cross purposes or you duplicate effort. And this is pri precisely what has been, to a large extent, uh, some of the things that, uh, you know, has been unsatisfactory about this government. So if they can coordinate very well between ministries, amongst ministries, with the broad plans that they normally have beyond the yearly budget,
because they are mid-term uh, forecasts, you know, and there are also the global forecasts, the, you have the ERGP. So does everything go in sync? And is everything timeless? Are the civil servants conscious of the interrelationships between the ministries? I mean, do they move documents? You see, because when we say budget execution and administration of government and delivery of public services, it's about people quickly moving information from place to place mm -hmm. and responding to that information, taking decisions. Well, I think well, sometimes this year, yeah, we, yes. we saw the vice president, I think then in acting capacity, meeting with uh, yes. uh, civil servants and yes. trying to impress upon them the yes. importance of their role in uh, government policies. Yes. But, you know, moving away from the budget, also over the weekend, because I'm just yes. trying to say that this is part yes. of what will form discussions uh, from, from today. Mm -hmm. But looking at, um, yes. you know, what the news that broke over the weekend, you've yes. also, we've heard over and over again, the criticisms of this administration, nepotism is always one of yes. them, uh, that the president has been partial to the North in his appointment. Yes. And uh, we, we saw the yes. presidency yes. reacting to, yes. uh, to reports, yes. uh, a newspaper report that, yes. uh, said that about 80% of the president's yes. appointees were from the north. Yes. Uh, what did you make of the president's rebuttal? Well, two things. I think, I think the president, in trying to um, issue a rebuttal, is uh, trying to be responsive, trying to be sensitive that at least people are actually complaining and I must defend you know, my position or myself or my just or whatever. And I think that is a good culture. I think presidents should be able to, re people in government should be able to be accountable and responsive when people raise queries. Now, whether it is all right or not, well, it's neither here. You have to really distill it. There are two things about public office and the holders of public office. It's a question of perception, and it's a question of where the power lies. If you have 10 public officers and you see different portfolios, and three of them are significant in terms of the fact that they're visible, they're influential, then you start wondering. Uh, you can hold a raft of public offices. There's a difference between holding power and holding influence. And you have a person who can carry his public office in such a way, you feel, you feel that all the powers have been given unto him. Now, why is it, uh, why are Nigerians particularly sensitive about the nepotism issue? It is because of the service they tend to deliver. It is, depends on the issues that come on ground. I think before this government came to power, Buhari had always been, um, it's al it has always been suggested that the president was pro-North and uh, slightly more religiously, you know, well, everybody's religiously inclined, but, you know. So, but that has always been the case. So it's been a case of someone who has already had a microscope looking out for him and looking out for a particular flaw. Now, the difference is that I'm not sure he took heed to the fact that there was a microscope upon him. If he took heed to the fact that there was a microscope phone upon him, maybe things would have been conducted in a manner that by now people wouldn't need to raise the questions of whether there, were, there is nepotism or not. Of course, some people feel marginalized. Uh, the immediate kitchen cabinet, as it were, is, uh, you know, is, is sort of speaks to or sort of justifies what people are saying. So, yes, he should defend and then the appointments. And again, for, for God's sake, those who are appointed should actually deliver on their services because the Nigerian public will tend to, uh, they wouldn't be bothered, you know. I mean, if we were having light 24 hours, you know, and we had 25, 25 uh, uh, megawatts or whatever it is, nobody will care who is there. The person might as well be there forever. So the first thing is to deliver those services. The second thing is to consider public perception. We cannot, we are no longer in a time or in a regime where people will say, I've made the decision and that is that. It doesn't happen and the Nigerian public will not accept it. Mm. So the president and the executive and whoever gets into power, uh, Jonathan was, 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 uh, was, uh, was accused of uh, the same thing I recall, where the Eurobars went at a particular point and asked for appointments. But you see, Nigerians themselves should recognize the fact that appointments themselves don't mean nothing too much if those appointments are not delivering on substance. But you have to satisfy the diversity of Nigeria. You have to satisfy the fact that people want to belong and feel they belong and the people they want to access government, there's somebody they so can call. So did you think that the rebuttal then yes. met that concern for diversity? Well, it was an attempt, a first attempt. And I think, I hope it will serve as also a caution. Right, the, the president and the government know now, well, they're supposed to have known before, that people will always be sensitive to that. 
Well, you, you, for some, they will be satisfied. For others, depending on which side of the divide you are. Um, for me, well, you could say North heavy and, and, and stuff like that. But, you know, Nigeria is becoming a country these days. You know, you hear a name and you want to presume it's from the North, you know. Or you hear a name, you want to pres presume it's from the South. You know, I have a friend who is called Bayo. He's from Akukwedu. I mean, well, that's close to Yoruba. But you think immediately he's a Yoruba man. So those things are the things that we are grappling with. And it's a pity that we are grappling with some of those mundane things without looking forward or beyond, you know, exactly what those things are supposed to deliver on. You know, and, and our leaders really, 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 really have to take a look at themselves in terms of what they portray and how they reflect in terms of what they themselves are doing. If a leader is in power and he, he's seen to favor his own people, then everybody who goes into power is expected to go and favor his own people. Mm. It's very, very worrying. I mean, it also speaks to the question of unity, yes. uh, you know, which is one of the areas people also fault this administration. Yes. Uh, they believe it hasn't done as much as it ought to have done, especially in the wake of the 2015 elections exactly. and uniting the country. Yes. Uh, you agree with them, do you? Well, uh, you see, I've said it from time. I think this government could do much in coordinating within itself. Now, if you cannot coordinate within yourself, it will be very difficult for you to unite a diversity. What do you mean by coordinating within itself? Well, you see, okay, take for example, look, I mean, look, it, it's a pity, but the truth has to be said at some point in time. There is no sector you can hold within this government that you have not had an internal uh, uh, conflict. Foreign affairs, there was. Oil and gas, there was. The security sector, there is. Within the justice sector, there is. That is two arms of agencies of government which at one point in time have contradicted themselves publicly. It's worrisome, isn't it? It is of concern. It how, is of concern. How does that affect national unity then? Well, you see, the machinery that is supposed to forge national unity must be a contraption of unity itself. You must, you cannot give what... It's not, it's not, look, I believe, I know the people in government. I mean, they are patriotic people. They are patriotic and they want to be, and they are inside themselves, they are Nigerians and they are nationalists. You see, but the, the, it's nationalism and patriotism and unity is not mouth. It is what device you put together to make, look, there are two problems Nigeria has. The one of size and the one of diversity. We are 360 different ethnic groups, right? The diversity is so our challenge, the challenge of leadership is to be able to manage diverse interests.